Uh, I have to make one qualification. I'm actually not in the 3D printing business. Right? We use 3D printers a lot as part of our design and our R&D processes. But we're actually a company that starts upcycling waste to create architecture, furniture, interiors, and other kinds of products. So along the way, we've developed a, a series of tools and machines, um, that being the Trespresso and his newer cousin, the Mini Trespresso, which starts turning at a miniature and at a very domestic level, recycling waste into useful products. Uh, they could be tiles, they could be coasters, they could be different connectors and so on. And that is really the talk today. So for the next half an hour, I'm gonna be giving a quick, well, we're gonna start off with some bad news. Um, what's happening with the world and what we're actually populating it with. So you might look at this as waste. Uh, we look at it as a treasure trove, as a mine of potential materials we can actually use for the construction of not just products, but the construction of our future cities and our buildings. You might know this already. I'm sorry I didn't edit the language out, but uh, excuse the French. Uh, global temperatures will rise by, well, depending on who you listen to, between two to four degrees by 2100, meaning we're not gonna hit the promises of the Paris Agreement. By 2025, two out of three people would have no access to clean water, so please drink up all that water that's out there in the hall. Uh, over 80% of the world's fisheries are fully exploited, and a refuse truck worth of plastic is dumped into the ocean every minute. Well, has anyone here been in a failed relationship, broken relationship, anyone? No, someone's probably come up and told you, hey, don't worry, there's a lot of fish in the sea. And now you can basically go factually that, hey, there's also a lot of trash, and it's all plastic. And concrete, which is you know pretty much our entire uh, construction industry here in Singapore, almost entirely, right? It's also one of the most destructive uh, construction materials in the planet. So the industry that I'm in, I'm an architect, right? So the industry that I'm in, which is construction, and the industry that we're in, which is 3D printing, inherently is unsustainable. So two of the biggest problems in our generation are energy and waste, right? There's also water, there's also food. Arguably with enough, you know, if you, if you solve the energy problem, you can solve the water problem and to some extent the food problem, right? But our industries basically are damaging in terms of energy and waste, right? And it's not just carbon because based on this model, whatever we're putting back into the environment, whatever we're throwing away, is also disrupting biogenetic diversity and is putting stuff back into the atmosphere. Okay, those of you from Singapore, you might have seen this, anyone? Which not so famous island is it? Samakau. Samakau, right? So it's not quite Sentosa, not yet, but at the current rate where we incinerate all our waste, right? Or the vast, vast majority of our waste, it goes back into Samakau by 2035 it would be completely filled with incineration ash. Not quite the landfill that you saw earlier, but incineration ash. And that's converting green into gray, gray ash. But yet, we're not recycling quite enough, right? Any one of us use these things. And even if we do, you might find all sorts of things in one of these bins. Use diapers, all sorts of things that you can't recycle, right? So here's the thing, if in doubt, do not recycle, right? Because those poor guys who are gonna have to sort it out you're gonna create, you're gonna be part of that recycling problem. The circular economy, therefore, you guys would already know, is that, hey, we take this linear model, speaking of which, when was the last time you bought a new piece of clothing? Anyone? Ladies in the audience. Last week, maybe, right? Yesterday, over the weekend, maybe. But the fact is, you're gonna only be wearing it on average seven times before it goes back into the dump. And that's non-gender specific, male or female, seven times, once you've had enough Instagram pictures of them. So that goes back to the waste. So the idea really is we take that linear economy and then we loop it back and then we recycle it, right? So the raw material, like the previous speaker has shared, that becomes, once again, new material for new applications. So we take scraps, we turn that into upcycled materials. And you're wondering, hey, recycling versus upcycling, right? Is that just jargon? That's marketing speak? 
Well, in some ways, yeah, but not quite because we put in new value and new design on these elements and then they become something new. Case in point, by extending the life cycle of this popular black and glassy product, we've created new products, crockery. What do you think the original product was, anyone? The things that you stare at every three minutes these days. Right, so, smartphone glass. This, this jacket that I'm wearing right now, that's made out of about 20 PET bottles. Right, that's, so that's taken down, that's broken down pallets and then long woven and then you get fabric which you can make anything out of. So we do furniture as well, so they're flat pack, uh, they're easily disassembled and assembled because by the end of its lifetime, you'd want to take it apart and be able to sort it out into its constituent parts as well. Lampshades, and the one on the right, so this is basically playing cards from MBS, the one of the casinos downtown, right? So basically, they throw away their cards every 45 minutes, right? To prevent cheating, and you know, if you're gonna pay a good $200 to get into a casino, you better get some nice cards to play with. Anyway, so 45 minutes, they replace the cards, that means two tons of paper waste, of plastic card waste, at the end of every day. So we take that and we sort of mash it up, turn that into furniture, uh, coffee tables in this case. This is a building that's made out of 1.5 million plastic bottles that we reformed into a kind of brick that interlocks. Uh, it's also a building that stands and is grounded by a moat of water, so it doesn't have foundation, right? So a moat of water kind of keeps it down. Uh, that's made out of recycled polycarbonate, which is the stuff you find in a lot of e-waste, CDs, DVDs, and their covers. Remember those things? And that's a brick, right? So they've been reformed and they've been modulated and they found themselves as building material. So that project caught the eyes of a certain Mr. Jackie Chan and we collaborated with him to uh, create a stuntman training center in Tianjin. So the facade elements, they're all manufactured out of recycled plastics. The interiors as well, we brought in one of the early trash vessels on site to start remanufacturing the waste that comes out of a stunt training center, film sets, electronic waste, all sorts of things into facade elements and into interior elements that then populate the building. Uh, this is a hotel and an innovation center also by the same individual uh, that's in Beijing. So it's a uh, sort of a uh, what we call an ANA project, an additions and alterations project or an enhancement project on an existing building but we basically added, uh, in this case, railings, awnings, and so on that are made out of recycled polycarbonates. Uh, likewise with the interiors, the bed linen, as well as these acoustic panels, which are also similar in material to what I'm wearing right now. Electronic waste then becomes the facade and roof material for an electronic waste factory in Taiwan. Sun shading materials as well. Food waste, right, inorganic food waste becomes uh, interior elements. There's, this is also uh, made out of recycled PET. It's a um, pop-up basketball stadium, a dome, or a, a tent, really, that's, that's supported by one uh, crane. In this case, the module for the shelving becomes basically your backpack if you tie a drawstring around it. And of course, the idea is if you buy enough pairs of sneakers, you could go home and build up your own shoe rack. So that's one product for three uh, different purposes. But really, why we're all here today is for Trash Presso. So the idea really of localized production, first of all, gets around the whole argument of, hey, if you have a ton of waste all of a sudden, right, if it's gonna land in your backyard, or if, you know, if you're gonna have to ship it to, in this case, Taiwan or China, and have it manufactured and ship it all the way back, what does that mean for carbon, right? There's a lot of embodied carbon that then gets expanded for that. So instead of doing that, we'll bring the machines to where the waste is actually generated, right? So on the one hand, you've got, well, in this case, it was in Shanghai, but there's two different modules, one which heats up, in this case, the waste, just to a point where it melts, not to the point where it toxifies the air, and then it gets transported to the other machine where basically the pressing happens. So the tiles, the um, cups, the coasters, whatever it is, whatever modules that comes out in the mold gets generated that way. So that's your original trash presso. It fits on two 20-foot trucks. In other words, not very convenient. Uh, it's also solar powered, so that keeps the batteries in charge and it offsets some of the energy consumption.
and has been traveling around the world over the past four years. In this case, right outside, again, that Jackie Chan facility uh, for the London Design Week, where you see, in this case, if you throw in your plastic bottles, it gets turned by these machines into these white recycled tiles. Well, they could be coasters, they could be tiles, they could be little, uh, you know, <laughs> little products, but basically the idea is repopulating the planet with recycled materials. It's also in the Milan, Milan Design Week, and we brought it up, in this case, to the Tibetan Plateau, again, with a project with National Geographic and Jackie Chan. So, in this case, all that plastic waste out up there in the mountains becomes tiles for school, uh, for a, a, a kid's school in uh, Tibet. Join Jackie Chan, international superstar, and Arthur Huang, Nat Geo's emerging explorer and structural engineer. Together, they'll embark on a new adventure. Full of eco-friendly innovations and cutting-edge green technology. Jackie Chan's Green Heroes, Wednesday night at 10 on National Geographic. So the gentleman you see in the video is Arthur. He's our founder, right? This is also his brainchild. But the idea is what can you turn right, into actual products? So we've developed things like um, the fabric, uh, my sneaker right, for Nike, and um, subsequently quite a bit of work for them as well. But back to, um, to Tibet, or in this case, Qinghai on the Tibetan Plateau. Uh, these are made out of uh, recycled PET. Right, so each child actually gets to write a little note and then post it uh, on their little wall. Well, because Facebook is banned in China. But anyways, that's uh, the mini version of Trash Wrestle. Right? You're not going to be able to put that in your living room. This one, depending on where you stay, you actually can. Right? So it's about 6 meters across by about 2 meters deep and about 2 meters high. So again, those two modules, one that heats up and one that forms, it works in interaction with something we call Robin, which stands for basically robbing your bin. So instead of throwing it away in the trash can, you put it back in a recycling bin. So you have got all these little tubs and little bins for different kinds of waste. So for instance, if I had a plastic bottle, I'd be taking out the cap, I'd put that back into um, the cap into polypropylene, I'll cut out the label, put that into LDPE or PVC depending, I'll cut out the little ring, put that into HDPE, and the naked bottle itself, I put into PET. And the looks on your, on your faces right now are going, that's too much trouble, I'm just gonna throw it away, right? So for all that trouble, you actually get this QR code, and there's an app that you can download, right? You scan that QR code, you get recycling points. So these points can be exchanged for all sorts of things. They can be exchanged for the products that Mini Trespresso makes, or they can be exchanged with our coffee partners or service providers, depending, kind of like your grab points or any other credit system. This is the slightly upgraded version of Robin. So what happens is, instead of tracking your face, right, which obviously poses a security concern, if not an aesthetic concern for some of, for some of us, we actually have the cameras track the product. So if it's a bottle, for instance, if it's PET, it will track its transparency, its form, and so on. And if it's in the wrong tub or if it's in the wrong bin, the conveyor belt spits it back out to you, right? And it's better than any airport luggage handling system because that basically just spits it out to you anyway. So if you do it right though, uh, it takes it in. And if the bin is full, of course, um, there's an alert by the facility manager, right? And then they can come in and actually remove that. So it's like a little uh, folio system for your waste and the raw material or the waste which becomes the raw material for this can then be uh, manufactured into all sorts of things through trash presso. In this case, coasters. So these were actually the invitation cards uh, for the earlier Tomasi Ecosperity uh, conference back in May this year. Four years ago, MiniWiz started a journey to create the first mobile recycling line, the Trash Presso. Using press machines, shredders, ovens, and other industrial equipment, Trash Presso is able to recycle trash anywhere. While TP1 traveled around the world, MiniWiz developed a new generation of Trash Presso.
modular system with a smaller footprint for easier transportation and higher energy efficiency. The next iteration of Trash Presso is able to turn your trash into products faster than you can finish at Espresso. With the new system of heat induction presses and specific molds for different parts, the process has become faster and more efficient. The new Trash Presso complements Robin Miniwa's smart trash collection system designed to work with the next generation of 5G networks. We will track every single piece of your trash from the moment you throw it away till the time we put it back in the game. IoT is the core of our new system. Furthermore, new Trash Presso can be upgraded with a robot arm that will do the dirty job. Technology, engineering, design, ingenuity, creativity, and passion. This is Trash Presso 2.0, the mini Trash Presso. So it's not quite additive manufacturing in that sense because it's still heat pressed and a lot of our work is still through injection molding. But the mold that you saw, in this case the bowl, with that funny uh, Fibonacci pattern uh, below, that's actually made out of 3D printing as well, and then the mold is cast against uh, that 3D block. Right? So imagine if the materials can also be recycled, which is the topic of today's uh, conversations. Now, uh, we brought the machine in to the HDB hub at uh, Tuapayo. Right? So, um, this is a really, really interesting study on the local Singaporean psyche, because what we did was we basically went, hey, come on in, answer a recycling question correctly, right? bring in some of your trash that you can convert, and then you get a free coaster. So all of a sudden, you realize that, hey, you kind of see the same faces over and over again, because we could generate it in many different colors, right? depending on the source color of the trash, and also different kinds of materials. So anything from plastic bags, to uh, McDonald's straws, to bottle caps. And that's a bit of that. <laughs> process is pretty quick, but I have to confess that that video was actually sped up a little. All right, so from start uh, till end, it takes about 12 minutes for any given mold. It takes about another half an hour to change a mold. But what we did was we kept to that same mold for two days, right, across eight hours each, and created about four to 500 uh, coasters for members of the public, right, with the sworn uh, promise that they will only use that coaster ever again and never, ever throw it away they could recycle it, of course. So the machine, when it's not activated, sometimes it finds its way into our office, right? so it could actually fit in in a fairly small area. We've also customized it, in this case, for Nike. So if you, bear, if you buy a pair of really expensive shoes, you get a free ticket to create you know, a bangle that's made out of trash. But you know, that, that's, in some ways, a new retail model as well, to create uh, that experience and to create that novelty. But if you look at the machine, I mean, we, we all love it because we're in the uh, manufacturing uh, sort of scene, right? But the retailers, they go, oh, that looks like a machine. I'm like, it is a machine. It's like, well, what could we do to sort of dress that up and to make it look like a beautiful kiosk or marketing object they could buy hot dogs out of, right? So you can buy hot dogs, but it can look like a hot dog stand. So this is a case that's um, branded depending on the mall. This is in Taipei.
And instead of putting junk food in your body, what you then do is to throw away some of that waste and bring, it, bring something that's useful in return. So where do all these products go? They go to a store that's called Exchange by Miniwis, right? So that's gonna be set up in uh, Taipei, right? So you come in without cash, you don't even need your credit card, you don't need to have a Bitcoin portfolio. All you gotta do is be able to recycle, right? On the on-site Robin that's there and start getting recycling credit and through that start purchasing some of the products through purely recycling credit. So that's been set up in Sardinia in Italy for about three months earlier this year, and it's gained um, a little bit of traction, and it's also on um, the Zine, which is a uh, sort of sacred, holy website for designers, or something like that. <laughs> We've run this in um, a little pop-up in MBS as well for the Ecosperity show earlier this year. Right, so that's Robin, and um, how these products could also be exchanged for that. Right, so these bowls, uh, they're made out of anything from coffee grounds to um, the little lids on your coffee cups to bottle caps to uh, rice husks, right? So depending on which temperatures are set to actually melt these things down, uh, that too is possible. Also joints, construction joints, or in this case, uh, bamboo uh, members, so we can start assembling rapidly on site, uh, especially for disaster relief or something like that. These are the uh, Nike bangles. Uh, they're sort of like a turned around Nike swoosh. Uh, and then these tiles uh, that are made out of uh, different forms of trash. So I started the conversation with the whole energy and waste problem, right? Mini Trespresso tries to turn the manufacturing process into a lower energy and certainly a lower waste environment and hopefully therein lies our future. Thank you very much.